Welcome, everyone. This is the biggest audience I've ever spoken in front of. This is very exciting for me. Thank you, Jeff and Jeff, for letting me do this. Um, so this is how to create a business out of thin air. This is what I like to use the words thin air, even if you have no idea, no money, and no credibility. And it, uh, I, didn't, I learned how to do this because I had no money, no idea, and no credibility. So I was actually forced into a situation doing this. I did nine job interviews. I got fired from an internship at Ernst & Young, which is very hard to do the last week before they send you off to Disneyland. They didn't want to do that for me because I was <laughs> such a pain in the neck. And so I couldn't get hired anywhere. Uh, so I, I had no other choice but to be an entrepreneur. Um, so <laughs> my goal is today is to, to feel you leaving it, uh, feeling empowered as opposed to limited or, or compressed and to leave you with a perspective shift as to what's really possible in your business. And I also want to throw something else out there. Uh, how you treat your wife or your girlfriend or your partner is how you run your business. And I'm going to get into this in a second. So yeah, seven years ago, I bought a website for sale. I, was, I started flipping websites. And I flipped about four websites. I made a decent amount. I uh, had about 12 grand in the bank. And then I bought this website. And the guy totally scammed me. And uh, I went to attorneys. And I ended up spending like another 300 bucks on attorneys. And I uh, had $123 in my name. The attorney said, you better just drop it and move on. So um, I won't get into the specifics of the story because I have 20 minutes here. But so with $123 in my name, I created my first uh, product uh, in the real estate space, helping real estate brokers recruit real estate agents. And I have no idea how to do that myself. And I have no experience in the industry. And I don't even really have a passion for real estate. This is where I see a lot of people getting tripped up. They want to find their passion. So then maybe they can do something with their passion. But my passion, instead of making my passion a specific industry or niche, I made my passion simplifying problems for people. And with that passion, I can go anywhere and do anything. Uh, so I went from being scared, and I worked in my parents' toy closet, and I wish I had a picture of this, but it's really just a, a long closet with no windows, which is perfect for a kid with ADD, no distractions, no posters anywhere, and just a, a, a nice Sony 19-inch monitor and windows like 95 or 2000 or something is what I had at the time. And um, five years later, uh, I had no idea this would happen. It's actually three years later. I'm now an advisor to many of the top 100 real estate firms in the country. Again, I've never run a real estate company. Uh, we have three or four products in the real estate space. And uh, I think the next slide is one of the products, yeah. So this is Paperless Pipeline. This is the most successful product that we have created. And this was also done out of thin air. And uh, you can see we have 21,000 people using it. 3.2 million contracts submitted, 193,000 deals closed. I, I don't know. I can't. I don't even. Those numbers don't make sense to me looking at this. I, I can't believe this has happened to me. Um, and I want to kind of get into how it happens so you guys can do the same for yourself. That's at paperlesspipeline.com. Now, the reason I was able to go from this $123 over here to um, I don't ever have to work again a day in my life. I now work because I choose to. And I was able to do that because there's four elements of a freedom-based business. So how many of you here actually run a company? Hand, hand, raise hands. How many would like to be an entrepreneur and run their own company? Be honest. Come on. That's it? There's some liars in this room. <laughs> um, so how many of you who currently own a business could step away from it and come back a year later and it would be bigger and more successful than when you left it? One, two. OK, that's the minority. Um, there's a mindset involved with that, with that. It's not a circumstance that's keeping you from, from being able to do that. And it comes down to, well, there's more elements than four, but these are really important. Um, these are the four elements. I never even consider getting into a business unless it has these four elements. And they are an automated sale, reoccurring monthly revenue, no accounts receivable, and then selling tools instead of digging for gold. Uh, does anybody know who made the most money in the gold rush? Yeah. It wasn't the guys digging for gold. It was the guy selling shovels and tools and Levi Strauss, the guy making jeans. Now, this is kind of a predicament because American society sets you up to dig for gold. You get very excited to go do things. Um, and actually, like college trains you to basically dig for gold instead of training you how to build freedom by building tools. Um, so uh, seven years into my journey, now I'm 29, and I've found my passion. I've found my calling. And I said my passion before was simplifying problems for people, but I really feel like my passion is to be a teacher. I, I've set an intention that I want to become one of the best teachers in the world. And so I put that out for you, there for you. What do you want to be the best in the world at? Because you can totally do that. And think about that question. Now, I thought about that question for a year before it 
finally came to me. And I was watching the Olympics, watching all these people win gold medal after gold medal, like a highlight reel. And they would collapse after the finish line and like be in tears and their coach would come run out. And I was like, wow, I got really emotional. I was like, man, what do I want to be the best in the world at? As I watched these people reach the pinnacle of their life. And it's the best teacher in the world. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, this is my current business. This is my baby. This is, uh, has all of my heart. And this is called The Foundation. And we launched, we started this two months ago. And uh, we launched it yesterday, and um, we made so much money so quickly that the merchant account froze the funds. And so now we have to go through all these legalities to get our money because they didn't like how quickly we made it. Um, Dwala. What's that? <laughs> Dwala. Yeah, Drew told me that. He's like, you should go to Dwala. If they can get a form that I can plug in on their site, that'd be great. Um, I don't like transferring bank accounts yet. Thank you for that, though. Um, so in, in uh, two months, we have... Uh, this video has been shared 3,400 some times. We have 13,000 people on the database. This is in two months, actually. And 2,000 people have applied to be taught by me this process of creating companies from thin air. And we're only going to be accepting uh, 300. And we just launched today, and we're quickly approaching that. Um, in the first hour, we had 100 students sign up. And I hope it would be a dream for me if we get to 300 um, by the end of the next few days. So um, I want to talk about the single greatest cause of human suffering. This is one of the things I think causes many people to not be entrepreneurs. And do I have a time? Okay, good. Um, so there are two kinds of beliefs in the world. There's the limiting beliefs over here that really constrict you and limit you and cause you pain and suffering. And then there's the empowering beliefs over here, which open you up and feel light and make you want to do anything or you encourage you to empower you to do anything. Um, limiting beliefs uh, are the greatest cause of human suffering. And the biggest limiting belief is that I am not good enough until or I'll be okay when um, fill in the blank. I'm not good enough until or I'll be okay when fill in the blank. And uh, the, the thing with this, as you know, this is uh, that when continues to change uh, and you actually never end up feeling good enough. And so um, real quickly, uh, I wanna let you guys know that you are all good enough and okay as you are. Um, so I'm going to start with some stats. Like you have a 1 in 70, just to give you some perspective on how unique you are. You have a 1 in 70 chance of getting hit in a car by a car in the next year. You have like a 1 in 200 chance. Well, I can't remember that one. Uh, but there's a 1. <laughs> and the cool one is you have a 1 in 10,000 chance of getting injured by a toilet seat. Has anybody ever been injured by a toilet seat? Yeah, okay, 1 in 10,000 and not a single person in this room. Um, you have a 1 in 500,000 chance of getting struck by lightning. Does anybody know anyone that's ever been struck by lightning? Yeah, this is, this is more, than, more than toilet seats. Does anybody ever know anybody that's been hurt by a toilet seat? No, because everyone's too embarrassed. Okay, so they don't want to talk about it, but they're going to brag about getting hit by lightning. Um, 1 in 2 million chance of actually getting killed by lightning. So you have a four, 1 in 4 chance of surviving that. Um, your chance of being born is even, even greater. The chance of winning the lottery is one in 60 million, or one in 600 million, one of the two. <laughs> 600 million, yeah, okay. Um, that means you have to buy 600 million lottery tickets before you, that doesn't make any sense. Um, the chance of being born is even greater than that. The chance of you being born is one in 67 to the 80th power or something like this. In other words, it's one, I, wish I, had, I wish I had it on the slide. It's one in six, and then 87 zeros is your chance of being born. So six billion is like six zeros, right? There are that many more zeros to go before you ever have a chance of being born again. You guys are all unrepeatable miracles. There can never be another you. There'll never be another you with your mind. There'll never be another you with your personality. There'll never be another person of you with your DNA. So you not stepping up to be who you are is robbing the world of its greatest gift, because there can never be another you. Now, I know I've just repeated this just statistically, and you can understand this logically, but really just sit with that over the next few days, because it has some really profound insights. I don't think I'd be standing here doing this. I might want to shy or hide away unless, until I came to this realization. So the great shift in my life happened at Burning Man, and the two Jeffs of Silicon Prairie made me take down one of the photos. That was too inappropriate. Um, <laughs> it was just a bunch of hot babes in their Burning Man gear. And um, I met my business mentor. What's the next slide here? Okay, well, here's my business partner. Um, 
I was actually looking at this photo. It looks like we're like each other, but then I feel like Andy's pushing me away with his hand. He's like, I'm kind of uncomfortable, but um, this, is, uh, this, is our, this is what you wear at Burning Man. And so this is, I took a screenshot of a video for what we did for the foundation. And we're on our way to Burning Man, and um, I got to meet uh, my business mentor. Uh, well, he's, I don't actually know him. He was my mentor, Evan Pagan. Does anybody know this guy? No one. Okay. It's a guy you need to know. Um, he sold over $100 million in information products. He's an alchemist. He creates money out of thin air. Um, he sells $20 million a year in the dating advice niche, teaching men how to pick up women. He sells even more money teaching women how to, catch a great, kick, how to keep a great guy. And then he teaches business owners how to build their business as well. I've never met a smarter guy on the planet. And I got to meet him, and he's just as amazing in person as he is. And anyway, so I, it, turned, it turned out that I went to Burning Man, and my, our, our RV was parked right next to his. Holy shit. Like, this is the guy I've been following six years, watching these DVDs, listening to his audios, and then I get to sit next to him. And so um, I'm currently single, and so I was like, Evan, you know, you're like the dating guy. Teach me, teach me how to get some chicks at Burning Man. Like, you're the dating dude. And Burning Man is a very target-rich environment <laughs> for women. <laughs> That's why I wanted to show you the photo. Um, so uh, Evan's like, all right. And he's like, well, why do you want to, to, to um, you know, pick up women? And I was like, well, I actually want to meet my wife. I want to have my own Annie Lala, which is his wife, who she's incredible. So he said, all right, well, if that's your intention, here's your, here's your first assignment. You're going to go and approach women at Burning Man, and you're going to ask them. I won't get into all the details, but I basically approach them and ask them the most important quality they're looking for in a, woman, in, in a guy, not a woman. That would be weird. Um, in a guy. And um, they would answer amazing answers, like supremely confident, owns who he is, sense of humor, allows me to be weird and quirky, like all these incredible things that have nothing to do with what a guy usually worries about, which are maybe money or status or looks or any of those things. None of that, none of that stuff hit the radar on women. This wasn't a surprise to me, but it was still cool to hear. So I come back to Evan. I was like, Evan, I did this assignment. What's the next one you got for me? And he's like, all right, now I want you to think about the most important qualities for you. What do you want to stand across from your, your wife on your wedding day and say to her in front of all your friends and family? as the most important quality that would embody your relationship. And I said, oh, I don't have any idea. And so I thought about for a day, and the word play kept coming back up and up and over and over again, play. And so I, I decided that I want to sit across from my wife and say, I want to play with you in this moment, in this minute, and I want to play every day for the rest of my life. And the next two qualities that came up were to be healing and supportive. Those are the three most important qualities in a relationship that I want to pick. And I said how you treat your wife is how you treat your business. So the next thing that Evan told me to do, he said, okay, great. You've got playful, healing, and supportive. Now I want you to um, write these down, three sentences on why they're important personally, why they're important in relationships, and why they're important in business. So um, the three qualities. And then he told me to give speeches on them. So I'm doing exactly what he told me to do. <laughs> um, so playful, healing, and supportive. So playful is important to me personally because it unlocks the best parts of my personality when I can interact with joy. Um, healing is important because it creates a soft, vulnerable space for me to interact with generosity. Support is important because it's the reason I'm on this planet, to support people. It's the reason for community, it's the re and it creates a foundation for explosive growth. In relationships with a significant other, playful is important because it brings out the best qualities in that person and allows them to shine. Think about the last time when you were just totally playful, your mind was shut off and you could just be you. It's amazing. Um, play brings that out. Healing is important because it stops the past suffering, ends the cycle of recreating our hurts in our own future children. So healing is probably one of the most important things that we can do as, as humans with each other. And this is one of the things, these, I do this stuff, stuff in business, I'll get to that in a second. Um, support is important because it creates the ability to surrender into each other. I wonder how many people really out there actually really truly feel supported by their partner. When you can trust into someone's support completely, potential expands to surprising capability. Now in business, playful is magic because it attracts more profit, more customers, and kick-ass employees. I have people begging me to work for me for free, writing me novels of all the stuff they'll do, sell their cars, move to my house, do, be my servant. I, sh I shit you not. Like, to come and just work for me because I don't know, there, I have this vision and we ha we're so playful that people just, they want more and they're attracted to that. And so 
it also shifts your mind into a more creative, playful place. Um, there was a study done where people watched a comedy movie and then people watched like a drama, and the people that watched the comedy solved the problem, whatever was next, twice as fast. Um, so playful is really important. Um, here's a picture of me when I was 22. Aren't I cute? When I was, this is my photo of being a realtor when I decided I wanted to try to be a real estate agent before I, went, before I got smart and realized I needed automated sales and reoccurring revenue to have freedom, not one-time deals and transactions. Um, I got so bored after taking these photos that my next ones I was like, yeah. And so, <laughs> so that's the bottom half of me and I was, I was just miserable taking these photos and so like I've always been playful whether I knew it or not. And that's probably why Ernst & Young fired me and that's why I'm now doing my own thing so I can be playful. Um, healing's important because it, 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 conflicts in customers and employee relationships, when you heal someone, it creates an energy field of loyalty and love. Now, I know some business owners say, you know, they have trouble maybe retaining employees. How much time are you spending with them actually healing and, and supporting them in their vision for what they have for their life? We have three questions we ask our employees. What, um, what is it that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months? What are you going to do to grow? And how do you want to contribute to the world? Then we write down, I write down those answers and I help those employees do those things. Do you think they're loyal to me? Do you think they want to go anywhere? I don't do this to trick them or keep them in, although it does work very well. Um, support is important because it's how you transform customers into raving lunatics for your vision. Support turns one customer into 10. Support is important for employees because when they feel supported and trusted, they soar. I don't micromanage any of my employees. They, are just, they just do amazing stuff all on their own. So those are the three things. Did anybody like hearing those? Yes? So this, thank you. So when Evan gave me the assignment, he's like, all right, so you got the three things that you want in your soulmate that you're gonna create your wife with. And I was like, yeah, now do them for every area of your life. And I was like, what? Those don't have anything to do with, oh my gosh. Yes, they do. So yeah, uh, thank you for that. Um, so how I create products from thin air, this is the last two minutes of the speech and I can explain this pretty quickly. So there are some limiting beliefs that people have about business. They need an idea, they need money, and they need credibility. Let's just quickly reverse all of those. This stuff is super simple. So paperless pipeline. The way that I came up with this idea is I contacted real estate companies and I asked them, what software have you been looking for for years, but you just can't seem to find? Over and over again, transaction management software came up. I, 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 this is transaction management software, just, the words just bored me to tears. But the fact that there were eight other competitors out there in this space doing this, um, and, none, and, and none of the brokers liked any of the solutions is why I was able to build this. So that was the question that came up with this. My next question was like, well, I have no idea how to build this. I'm pretty clueless and I'm kind of nervous that there's eight competitors. I told this to my customer. Well, that, that wasn't my customer yet. He's like, don't worry, Dane. I'll tell you exactly everything you need to do to build it. Then I got my customers to pay for the development in exchange for getting the product free for life. Okay, so now I didn't need an idea, I didn't need money, and I didn't need any experience. And we're just tipping the iceberg with limiting versus empowering beliefs. My first product that I built when I had $123 to my name was a recruiting product. And this is a real estate recruiting. It helps brokers recruit agents in. It's one of the best products out there because brokers told me exactly what they want. I asked them, what's the most important activity in your business? They said, recruiting. I said, do you have any pain associated with that activity? They said, yes. I said, great, tell me more. So if you want to create businesses and you're not in one yet, or you want to expand your current business, remember the most three important words if you want to make money, find the pain, okay? If you don't have a pain big enough, you're not gonna pay. If you're having trouble getting people to pay for your product right now, you don't have a big enough pain. It's really hard to get people to go to the dentist until they have a toothache. This is one of our students from the foundation, 22-year-old kid in New Zealand. He had five grand in the bank account when he joined the foundation. After working with me, he had $80,000 in six months. This is all the importance of mindset. He created this from his garage. He was a cell phone employee, and, uh, or working at a cell phone company, and he did the same process with property management companies. He said, what's the most dreaded activity in your day? He said, property inspections. Lo and behold, those few questions are now creating this product. Every day, he adds $3,000 a year to his income with this product, because new customers are signing up every day. He's gonna be incredible. Another one of our students at the foundation, they created this drumbeat software which helps band managers promote their bands on Facebook. Talking to music band managers, what activities do you dread in your day? Oh, well, I gotta go to MySpace and, and Bebo and Facebook and all those places to, to post our tour dates. The solution's pretty obvious, a so one click submit to everywhere. It found the pain. Again, we hire the developers, we use the customers to fund the development. So, I can't believe I did it. 
Oh, I'm three seconds over. Um, in conclusion, so I've never given a 20 minute speech before. This is tough. I usually talk for about an hour and a half. So I want to leave you feeling empowered. Does anybody feel more empowered? <laughs> and hopefully uh, shifting your perspective on like on business. Uh, so let's do Q&A, if anybody has any. I have a quick question for you, Dave. Yeah. Good to see you. You too, man. You mentioned finding the pain point, right? But you also mentioned that you're not particularly passionate about real estate. So how do you get hyped up? How do you put in that energy, that effort into something and help others do the same thing in industries and areas that say they just don't love operating in? If you guys have questions, please come up to the microphones right over here, please. So um, I find that people start to become really passionate about a topic as soon as they understand it. Um, if you don't understand it, then you're kind of like, it's just kind of like blah, it's like whatever. Um, like for me, real estate was really boring for like three months until I really finally started actually understanding their problems. And once I understood that transaction management was such a pain and I saw the pain in their life and I saw how awful it was and I saw how much better it could be if I were to solve that, then I became passionate because I was like, well, I really feel like I have to do this to improve their life. So if, as, soon as, you under, as soon as you just uh, put your passion aside, make your passion understanding people diving into their problems and as soon as you really start to, um, like a problem starts to click and you start to understand that problem, then that's really like when you get excited about it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, great talk. I like the roadmap and having your customers pay for it. So once you launch, how do you get the, the paying customers? Do they just tell their, their other real estate agents how much they love it? Or how, how about the marketing part of the product? Great question. So this is the biggest, this is the biggest challenge. Um, you, use your, you have champion users. If you have 10 users on a product, you'll usually have two or three that are just studs with it. They absolutely love it. Usually you set up event-based marketing like webinars. Um, and you promote uh, your webinar, promote all, uh, everybody in that industry to come to said webinar and listen to you interview your champion on how they've used the product. And if you consistently do that once a week, um, it will become the most important customer acquisition channel. So you set these webinars every week, promote on Facebook, LinkedIn if you're in business, try and purchase email lists. This is recorded, I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then that's, how, that's how I do it. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Um, so I know one of the things that in your Mixer G courses you talk a lot about is the value of really sexy copywriting. So I thought maybe you could touch on that and how important it is to clearly articulate the pain points and everything and how that works in terms of conversions for customers. So just talk about how important it is? Yeah. Um, if you screw that up, everything is toast. Uh, I give you guys a formula um, that you can use for your business you try to. So um, it's the end result a customer wants in a specific period of time while reversing the risk and addressing objections, okay? Domino's pizza, hot fresh pizza, end result customer wants, delivered to your door in 30 minutes in a specific period of time, or it's free, addressing objections, okay? Domino's created a billion dollar industry with this simple formula. End result customer wants in a specific period of time while addressing objections. Your home sold in 90 days or I'll buy it. I'll teach, for my product, I'll teach you how to recruit two agents a week, even, even if you've failed in the past. So end result customer once, plus specific period of time while addressing the objections. Yes? I can say this because I'm old enough to be your mom. Have you found your girlfriend yet? No. Okay. <laughs> that was all. It sounds like... <laughs> Just one last question, one last question. Okay, so, so you're standing up here, you know, selling us riches if we just, you know, follow your platform. And I hear this all the time, and I know you only had 20 minutes, and I'm sure when you have longer, you talk about more of the pitfalls, but can you argue with yourself for a second and just kind of say why this might not work so that I believe you more? Yes. <laughs> a round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. What well, actually does work, all you have to do is push a button, and the next day, um, what happens is uh, when I've, I just, I teach this every year, and what happens is people, they, f they get in their own way. So it's not the tactics that people screw up, it's the mindset, it's the limiting beliefs. So um, if people don't get their limiting beliefs sorted out, like I'm not good enough until, they're not gonna be able to sell a product or even talk to a business owner. So um, limiting beliefs really cause sabotage. The other thing that uh, my friend Drew, he's here volunteering for photography, where are you at, Drew? What's up? So he, um, he talked about the, the biggest thing that trips him up is the marketing of the actual concept. 
So um, people have a lot of limiting beliefs around marketing. Like they don't want to be annoying, they don't want to be pushy, they don't want to be sleazy. So again, it kind of comes all down to limiting beliefs. So if you don't have what you want in your life right now, it's a limiting belief holding you back, okay? If there's an area in your life that's not abundant to you, there's limiting beliefs that are preventing you from, from being there. So we have students like um, that, uh, we had a student that would take two tequila shots before he'd get on the phone to talk to business owners because he was so nervous about it. So we found out, this, so the answer is limiting beliefs is what, is what causes the problem, limiting beliefs around everything. And um, so he would take two tequila shots. He'd let the shots sit in for like five or 10 minutes. He'd feel the buzz, then he'd pick up the phone. And so we found out that he had a limiting belief that said, I'm not valuable enough to be talking with business owners on the phone. And we, once we dug in, we found out that his mom told him at one point in, li one point in his life that you know, he shouldn't be speaking up all the time because he's not, he's not doing any good when he does. So that manifests today in this phone call. But it's not just calling business owners on the phone. I said, what if you see a beautiful woman? Can you go say hello? Can you go and say hello? No. What about if you're in a college classroom and you have a question? Can you raise your hand and ask a question? No. So this, this, this belief manifested in a phone call is actually run, running every area of his life. Now, I actually have, I could give a lick about software. I don't really care about it. It just produces the freedom that I like. And it gets people to sign up and pay me so I can actually teach them to reverse limiting beliefs to, to be more abundant in their life. If I could just say, come to me, I'll reverse limiting beliefs, you'll have a more abundant life, I would sell that. Um, but I can't charge as much money as I can to say, hey, let me teach you how to build a badass software company, and then I get to do what I really want. And they do get the software company as well. So this guy ended up, I re reversed this belief here, and now he's approaching women that he wants to, he's speaking up when he wants to, and we found out I did this through this four or five question framework that talks about reversing a limiting belief and choosing an empowering thought. And then from that place, he's now able to move forward and he's building software for like mobile food trucks now. Is that helpful? We had, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, thanks, okay.